on guys, welcome to Low Kick MMA Weekly Roundup. I'm your host Ryan Galloway here with Jordan Ellis and today's episode is once again brought to you by PFL, the Professional Fighters League, who have their third event of the season live on ESPN this time on May 6th, headlined by the former UFC heavyweight champion Fabricio Verdum, taking on Ren and Ferreira. We'll get to that later, but first, uh, we've got a, a card coming up this weekend that has had a lineup change, a couple of lineup changes over the past couple of days. It's now to be headlined by... Marina Rodriguez and Michelle Waterson in the women's flyweight division. Jordan, what do you think about all these change-ups we've had just over a couple of days? Yeah, it's, it's a shame. You know, obviously, we, we lost Sanchez and we've lost the main event. And uh, this card was one I was particularly looking forward to. And, it, and it's, um, it's not... It's not turned out to be the strongest in the end. Uh, the main event, it's two strawweights fighting a flyweight. So, it's... Um, yeah, it's not the greatest, but there's some good card. There's some some good fights on there. That Watson fight is a good fight. Obviously, you just don't want to see a headline on the card. Uh, Don Cerrone's got Alex Morono now, which is a good fight, and Neil Magny, Jeff Neal. Um, I don't know why they didn't just bump that up to the main event because that's a mm-hmm. really good fight as well. Um, got Rebus on there, Ben Rothwell. There's a few good fights on there, um, and I'm sure the MMA hardcores will be tuning in. Yeah, I agree with you there. Neil Magny and Jeff Neal really should have been the main event on this one. But hey, last time that I criticized the Michelle Waterson main event, it ended up being a pretty decent fight. So I'm not going to do that this time. And I guess that's a good spot to jump in in the main event there. We've got Marina Rodriguez taking on Michelle Waterson. From memory, did Rodriguez compete on the uh, first pay-per-view of the year? Am I remembering correctly? I actually don't remember. I don't know even though if these two are lined up to fight anyway on a different card and they've just moved it forward yeah, yeah she, she beat them on the rebus. that's right and she looked phenomenal in that fight so it'll be interesting to see because uh, taking what i can from that fight against rebus i consider rebus uh, a more better striker than michelle waterson so i imagine R- rodriguez is gonna have a bit of an advantage on the feet here do you agree with me there what do you think um no i, f- I feel this is a really good 50 50 fight i think the ones who have beaten Rodriguez have been Os- Esparza, who is, you know, very heavy on the wrestling and output. For, for me, it's about who's the busier fighter. It's just about it. I think it's going to be a really high pace you're going to see o- over the, um, the five rounds or however long it lasts. Uh, I am um, really 50 50 fight. Um, yeah, it'll come down to who wants it more. I don't think there's a lot in this fight I, on the feet or on the floor. I don't think someone has a, a very clear route to victory or clear massive advantage. It's a good 50-50 fight, and, and obviously that's why it's top in the card. And that's one thing I just didn't realize until you said it then. This is a five-round fight, even being on short notice. How good is the cardio going to be? Because I don't think either of these fighters were meant to be on this card in the first place. So I can't imagine either of them were tapering off into a fight camp over the last couple of weeks. Maybe over the last week they've known, but, you know, how's their conditioning going to be for five rounds coming in on short notice? You'd expect it to be good because they are, the, obviously, with the, um, the lower weight classes, they do tend to be cardio machines. So I expect them to be good, and I'm sure these two are, you know, in the gym anyway, preparing for some type of fight. So it, it's maybe come earlier than expected, but that just means no, no big weight cuts, and hopefully that helps them as well down the stretch. I, I'm expecting the, the pace to, to be high and stay high, you know, into the championship rounds. But, you know, as you said, if someone isn't fully there, if they haven't had, you know, any type of preparation, that could that could be the difference maker in this fight. Because as I said, it is a really close one. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll get your pick before I share mine. Who do you think takes this? <sighs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to go Marina Rodriguez. I, I think she looked fantastic last time out. And obviously, Rebass was the the next big thing and she just you know got rid of her and, and every time she's been in there it's been really close and I think she'll she'll edge a close decision I don't I don't think um, Michelle Wharton's going to be able to dominate her at any point in this fight so I think when it comes to the card Rodriguez might get the nod but it will be close I agree with you on the pick. I think it'll be Rodriguez as well, but I expect this to be more like the Joanna fight where uh, Waterson was a little outstruck on the feet. Maybe not to that extent um, because I don't really think that it's going to be yeah, as one side as that was. But I do expect Rodriguez to come through this pretty pretty handedly, and I expect her to get a win, uh, probably by decision. I think that's a safe pick there. Um, jumping on to the co-main event now, which was also a change-up, as we alluded to earlier. Don Cerrone was meant to fight Diego Sanchez, but the UFC cut Sanchez for reasons we discussed last time. Uh, and now he's facing Alex Morono. Do you think this is a good good replacement matchup for him? Yeah, Morono is a game. We've seen that when he fought Anthony Pettis. He's a, he's a game fighter. 
He's a tough fighter. It won't be an easy night for Cerrone, but you'd imagine, you know, with a full camp on his back, um, Cerrone will have enough to get back in the win column. It's been a while since we've seen him, you know, um, you know, get a win there. So um, Cerrone will be determined to go out and, and make a statement against um, Morono, who is not the biggest lightweight. So he's definitely not going to be a, a big welterweight, I don't think so. Yeah, he, he might have trouble in this one, but he's a game guy. It's a huge opportunity. Another big fight for him, too, on the bounce now. So, looking forward to seeing him in it. I expect Donald Cerrone to win, though. This is another one of those ones, like, when they booked uh, Cowboy against Hernandez back in the day, where it's like, this guy, I, I wouldn't say that Morono is, like, new to the game at all in the slightest, but it seems like he's kind of on the rise recently. I guess he had that setback against Pettis. Um but I feel like Cowboy is going to pass this test in the same fashion, and we're going to see Cowboy get a finish here and get back in the win column. Uh, yeah, I like this uh, this replacement. I think it's a better fight than the Sanchez fight because, like we spoke about last week, the Sanchez fight was probably going to be one side of Cerrone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Morono's a gamer, as I said. He's 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 got what it takes to you know win this fight. Cerrone is not at his you know peak anymore, as we've seen recently. But this is in my opinion, a couple steps down in the level than what Cerrone's been facing. So I really do think he's he's got enough to get this win. But Morono's got it all to all to, you know, win as well. So he, he can go in there and make a name off himself off the back of um Cerrone who like last time Cerrone took a fight against someone he didn't know it was Darren Till and Darren Till smashed them. So he, he can't yeah. he can't underestimate his opponents. He's gotta be he's gotta be ready for, for Morono because he's gonna be coming swinging. I just don't think he'll have enough. Yeah, I'm taking Cowboy in that one as well. Um, not a lot more to say on that. Before that, we have my favorite fight on the card, Neil Magny taking on Jeff Neal. It's rebooked. It was supposed to be a main event back in, I want to say like January, February. I don't know. Earlier this year or end of last year, one of the two. Um, it was meant to be a, a main event then. Uh, obviously, Neil fell out. Robbie Lawler jumped in and Magny took that fight and passed that test. Um, so yeah, I'm keen to see this one. It, yeah, both of them coming off losses. I think Neil probably has an advantage on the feet here, although Magny's quite long and that can be tricky. Uh, but I expect Neil to get this one done. What do you think? Um, Jeff Neil or Neil Magny? That's that's all right. Yeah, you can't say can you? <laughs> Jeff Neil. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Um, so I think this should be the main event. I can only imagine that these two guys have turned down a short notice five round fight because. It, this is this is main event worthy. I would I would watch this. You know, if this was the card built around them, I, I would hundred percent watch it. So uh, it's a great fight, a great match matchup. I'd say it's the um, these two are the best of the rest in the welterweight division right now. We've got the you know the top guys. You know the Leon Edwards, the Kobe's, the Gilberts, uh, Usman obviously, and, and Masvidal. And then these are kind of the and Wonderboy starting. And then these are kind of the rest the, the rest of them. And I think these are the best. Jeff Neal showed a lot of power, a lot of power throughout his career. And I think Magni has shown ability. Like he, he might not be able to take that. So I am a bit worried from that standpoint. But he looked fantastic last time out, and I'm, I'm just waiting for Magni to turn into a, you know, a superstar. He's, he's, I've been waiting for ages. He, he has all the talent. He, he's long. He's, he's got all these attributes. But every so often he has a blip, and I'm, I'm gonna back him in this one to, you know to get over that hump, you know, get a big win over Jeff Neal, who, as I said, is, is a, a huge puncher, uh, one of the best at welterweight. Um, but yeah, I'm going for Magny. And that, that Robbie the Lawler fight was kind of telling for this because Lawler is one of those guys with that power and he just couldn't get inside on the range of Magny and it was causing him a lot of problems. And obviously the last time we did see Magny was against Chesser, wasn't it? And he, he he slipped up in that one, but it wasn't the most entertaining fight, mostly grappling based. Can't imagine we're going to see that in this fight. Yeah, I'm sticking to my pick here of Jeff Neal, uh, just because I think the power is going to play a difference, and I think if he lands uh, over three rounds, he's, he doesn't have to take his foot off the gas. He can probably get it done. Um, I'm taking Neal by knockout. You take Magni by decision. How do you think it gets done? Yeah, I think he, he, decision as a, as I said with the main event, it's going to be a close nip and tuck fight, and unless you know Neal lands that big bomb, I, I think Magni might just have enough to you know work his way through. It was. Obviously, he's he's shown some weaknesses on the floor as well, Magni, as GSA exploited last time out. So I don't think he needs to worry about that. I think he just needs to worry about getting his head off the centre and not being an easy target to hit. And he can, you know, point fight his way to a decision win. All right. Well, like I said, that's probably one of the better fights on the card. Keen to see what happens there. Before that, we have the heavyweights. Maurice Green taking on Marcos Ruggiero de Lima. What do you think of this fight? 
Um, two, I'd say two of the lower echelon, you know, heavyweight fighters. I don't, I don't think either of these guys look good in their last fight. So Lima was submitted by Romanoff. He done that weird, mm-hmm. just big brother Four-hand choke hand. on him, didn't he? Yeah, and uh, and then uh, Green got beat pretty easily by Greg Hardy. So and Greg Hardy isn't isn't a great fighter at all. So this is a good matchup between two, as I said, lower lower guys in the heavyweight division. I'm expecting one of them to go in and, and, you know, make a statement, get a big knockout and, you know, potentially a bonus. It's a, it's a big opportunity for one of these guys to, to go out there and, and you know, prove that they're not one of the lower guys. They are one of you, they can compete with the best. And if I had to have a guess, I think it might be for, um, sorry, not Ferreira, uh, Delima. I think Delima might go in there and, 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 you know, pull something off. Look, I'm taking Delima as well, and I think I, I don't agree with you that I, that's going to end in a knockout. I think that Green's going to try and initiate the wrestling in this one. Uh, not the wrestling so much as his grappling. He's going to want to get to the ground, uh, especially seeing how Delima was submitting his last fight. I think Maurice Green's probably seeing that he might have the advantage there. And I expect it to not be one of the more interesting heavyweight fights. I think it's going to be probably slower paced. Hey, who knows? It's heavyweight. There could be a knockout. Someone could go out first. Uh yeah, I, I'm struggling to make a pick on this one because I think either guy can take it, but I probably would just take Delima as well. Yeah, I, I'm I'm more saying it in hope, probably. I I, mm-hmm. I hate these boring heavyweight fights because they do, like, if nothing happens, nothing happens at all. So we have seen a few of them lately. Um, I think Modish Green is very hittable and uh, mm-hmm. Delima will be confident that he can get him. But as you said, after after that last fight and, and Romanoff pulling off that, you know, forearm joke, Green might think, yeah, let's get this one to the mat. So it is a good, it's good matchmaking again. The UFC um, never fail on that. It's a really good fight, 50 50. I'm edging the Lima, but really, yeah, as you said, it could go either way. Absolutely. Uh, and actually, before that, my second favorite fight on this card, uh, an awesome fight. Obviously, uh, Gregor Gillespie was meant to fight Brad Riddell at UFC 260, I believe. Um, and that fell through because Riddell, his team tested positive for COVID. Um, and now Gillespie's back, booked against Diego Fiera, Carlos Diego Fiera, which I think is a great matchup of styles because Gillespie is meant to be this this all-time great wrestler. And we haven't seen wrestling his last fight. Obviously, he, he was finished quite quickly. That didn't get a chance to see his grappling against Kevin Lee, which would have been a good test. Uh, but now we get to see his grappling test against someone like Ferreira, who's an ace on the ground. We saw in his last fight, he was able to get controlled against Bindu Dariush, but for the most part, if it goes to the ground, Fiero's will be able to pull it off. So I think it's a great test. Yeah, it's, it's a really good fight. I would say it's it's better than what um, Gillespie was originally in for. Um, Gillespie, the, the whole thing is he's been out for so long, hasn't he, since that, since that KO loss to Kevin Lee. So it's, it's all about him getting that rust off and how rusty he looks. And Ferreira, he's getting this on late notice, so it's it's not ideal for either guy. But they're both really talented. Um, James Lynch spoke to Ferreira for us, and I was going through that interview, and, and Ferreira was saying his mistake in his last fight was that he spent too much time trying to get you know submissions on on Dariush. But then in this fight, he's also saying I want to test his BJ, BJJ. So it seems like he he's learned his lesson, but he hasn't learned his lesson and he could spend quite a lot of time on the floor looking for submissions that aren't there. And that's the risk as a, as a um, jujitsu player is that while you're on your back, you're losing the round despite what you're trying to pull off. So it'll be interesting to see how he approaches this fight, how, how quickly he tries to get back to his feet or how much he looks for submissions. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm favouring Gillespie just because of that. He's got the wrestling, and it seems like Ferreira is willing to stay on the floor, at least for a, a while anyway. Look, I'm going to take Ferreira in this one because of those reasons as well. Um, I think that the wrestling is actually going to fall into Ferreira's trap. I believe over three rounds, if, they, if it's on the ground for anywhere from like, I don't know, six minutes to ten minutes of the full three rounds. I think in that op- in that time frame, there's an opportunity for Ferreira to submit him. I haven't seen Gregor Gillespie's BJJ defense on the level of someone like Ferreira. So uh, just going off Ferreira's record alone, I think he's capable of pulling off a submission. And w- if it's on the feet, I- I- even in that Benil Darius fight, Ferreira was landing huge shots, and it looked like he was the one that was the aggressor on the feet, and he was more comfortable striker, despite getting uh, like tagged a few times early. And that was quite back and forth. But I, I haven't seen Gillespie put together this one-shot power like on the feet that would worry Ferreira standing with him. 
So I expect Gillespie to shoot just because on the feet, I think Ferreira probably might have an advantage. Who knows? The problem is we haven't seen enough Gregor Gillespie yet. So yeah, this will be a great one just to see where he's at. Yeah, absolutely. And and Ferreira, let's let's be clear, he was just one fight away from he would have got that Tony Ferguson fight if he beat Darius. So he's he's not far off the top guy. So this would be a big win for Gillespie. I just um I feel like he, he will have the wrestling advantage and if he can avoid that power, he can avoid the stand up. Um I think he can survive the submission attempts as well. But again, another great fight. Um yeah, and, and it's it'll be great to see Gillespie back. It's been a while and he had an, an extra delay on top of it. And um yeah, as I said, it's even a bigger fight. I think this is a really good fight for Gillespie to come back to. And it's a good one for Fred to get, you know, get get that back in that win column potentially. Yeah, no, you're right. Um open the main card, we have Amanda Rebus taking on Angela Hill. I like this match, Maggie. You know, I think it's quite good. Uh Rebus obviously showed a pretty well rounded game. You know, last time out she she came up short, but before that she looked like a destroyer and she was getting pushed by the UFC. She's meant to be the next best big thing. Uh but yeah, unfortunately it didn't go well for her out against Rodriguez. Angela Hill, I believe, has had a couple of slip ups in her last few, unless I'm forgetting a win she had. Uh what's it look like? So let's see. I think Angel Hills had them really close fights that I think mm-hmm. uh, she beat Ashley Yoda last time out, but before that it was Michelle Watson and Claudia right. Gadea, both split decisions, both fights, you know, she could have won. I think a lot of people think she did win both of them fights. So uh, she's been mixing at the top. She's been looking good. I don't think she's going to have enough for Amanda Ribas. I think Amanda Ribas, you've got to knock her out to, to win this fight. Does Angela Hill have that power? I don't think she she does. I think she will. She, she'll drop this decision. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I'm kind of torn on it just because I saw Rebus in her last fight where she was hittable, she got hit and obviously finished. And even if Angela Hill doesn't have the power to put her out, can she just out tag her for three rounds? Like we saw Angela Hill's takedown defense is much improved. She's she's not getting dominated by the dressers as she was earlier in her career. Um so if they if this is a standing fight, it'd be hard for me to pick Rebus over Hill. But Rebus has showed such a well rounded game, so it's like uh, I don't know. It's it's really hard for me to decide. I think I'll take Rebus as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if Hill can edge a decision, or not even edge a decision. I wouldn't be surprised if Hill is our points for three rounds. Um, but yeah, that one will be an interesting one, won't it? Yeah, it's a really good fight again. If they pump that up to five, um, you know, five rounds, I wouldn't have minded seeing that for, as the main event. And obviously, you know, you can't because Rebus is coming off that loss, but she's still a big star. I think she'll get back in the win column in style. Um, Angela Hill, She's still just looking for that big win. I think I think every time she stepped up, she's lost. And although they've been closer recently, she still did lose. And I, I had a losing. Um, definitely the fight to Michelle Watson, the, the Gadell one could have really went either way. But um, yeah, re- re- really good fight, really good fight. And it's, I think that's the first fight on the main card as well. So um, despite everything that's gone on, this card does still have big fights. It's, it's still pretty stacked. So um, that'll be a good one. Could you imagine if it had its original main event? This would be one of the best cards like we've had in a little while, wouldn't it? I know we've been unlucky this year, you know, with these, especially the fight nights. I think we've done well to keep all the pay per views together, but these fight nights have lost a few, um, you know, a few big ones, and um, hopefully we can keep two sixty two all intact and 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 we'll crack onto that one next week. Yeah, oh, well, I'll throw it to you for the prelims because I'm sure there's a couple here you want to talk about. Um, yeah, always interesting to see Ben Rothwell in there. He's in with uh, Philip Linz. So that's, that's if I'm saying a heavyweight fight, I'm not going to find particularly interesting. I don't expect much from that fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll move swiftly on. Um, we got Phil Hawes against Kyle Dorcas, which is a good fight. Ryan Benoit on there. There's a, there's a lot going on. It's, it's, it's a good, it's a good solid card. Despite everything, it's, um, it's one I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and so it, like you said, it was it lost its main event, it lost half its co-main, but it ended up looking all right. So hope that's it. it pulls up as well, hope that it ends up being how we anticipate it will, and it should be a good one this weekend. Obviously, before that on Thursday at nine p.m. Uh, yeah, Thursday. I'm right. PFL is back on ESPN this time, headlined by Fabricio Verdum and Renan Ferreira. I think this is a, a really interesting fight for Budum to come back to. Obviously, his last fight, he submitted Alexander Gulfsson. So that's a pretty big win, isn't it? So he's gone over a different organization on a win like that, taking on someone like Renan Ferreira, who trains with some of the best grapplers in the world. So I think that 
his grappling defense is going to be on point. He trains with Rodolfo Rivera. He's trained with Jacare. He's got this high-level talent. Do you think his grappling defense is going to hold up? And do you think Fabrizio Vinum has anything for him on the feet? Um, I, I don't think Fabricio at this stage of his career has got much for him on the feet. Uh, when when Fabricio come back from his long layoff, he he got outstruck by Olenek, who who is a submission guy. So, it, um, that w- that was worrying to see. But then he bounces back with a win over Gustafsson and some like Vadum. You can never count out, but I do feel like his form is is quite patchy recently. You don't know what to expect from it. Is it going to be you know vintage one who, who submits someone really quickly, or is is he going to labour to a you know a loss? I think I think um, Renan is a is a real big problem for for Vadum. I think this is not is it's one of the toughest debuts they could have given really, and I think he I think he might get you know blitzed out of there. But as you said, if it goes to the ground, I think he's in trouble, and it doesn't really matter um, who he's training with because it's it's not going to be on the level of Vadum. Once Vadum's got you, it's not matter. It doesn't it doesn't really matter how good you are. You have to be super super high level to even you know mm-hmm. keep him off you. So. Um, yeah, but I don't think it'll get to that point. I think we might see a really big statement win from Renan, Renan in this one. One thing worth noting is that all of the wins that Ferrer has have come by finish. He's had one submission loss from memory, and I think he was DQ the other time. Uh, so he's got a, a pretty pretty impressive record on his hands, and I expect him to add Fabrizio Radum's name to it in this fight. Um, as much as I want to see Radum win because he's a veteran and we've seen him around for so long, I, I do agree with you. I think he might come up short here. Um, other fights on the card? So who else have we got? Um, I think um, Kayla Harrison's back. So she's you know, women's lightweight champion. I think she won the tournament last time. She's back in action. She's a big star. I think I think that what they're doing at PFL is great. She, she is one of the biggest stars in women's MMA and they're doing well to keep hold of her. Um, it seems like they're eventually trying to set up that Harrison against Shields fight, which would be epic. Hmm. And I expect her to, you know, look fantastic as she always does in this one and get off to a win and start. Um, yeah, and she so, Sorry, go on. Yeah, you, Kalisha Shields debut, debuts in like a week or two, doesn't she? It's pretty soon, right? I think it's June she's aiming for. Hmm. Yeah, well, so that'll be interesting to see if Kelly Harrison pulls through here, which I expect her to. I mean, she's the champion. Uh, she's got that awesome judo game. Um, she's just a killer. So I expect her to pass this test, and that would be an awesome one to see. Although I don't really find that fight quite interesting because Shields is a boxer and has very little grappling experience, and I think that uh, Harrison might just steamroll her. But, hey, all fights are interesting, so maybe we get that one. Uh, you can catch the action for this event on May 6th. The prelims will begin on five at 5.30 p.m. ET on ESPN+, Plus, followed by the main card at 9 p.m. on ESPN. Any last thoughts on this one? Well, yeah, just look out for Mohamed Usman, uh, Kamara Usman's big heavyweight brother. So, yeah, he's making his PFL debut. That'll be a big one. And, um, yeah, as you said, ESPN, don't miss it. Cool. All right, to news. Uh, obviously, the biggest thing, Nate Diaz is out of his fight. That's meant to be next weekend against Leon Edwards. The fight's been moved to UFC 263. There's a two-part question. That's the, I want your reaction on that. But I also want your reaction on uh, Ali Abdelaziz and Kamara Usman trying to get Colby to take the fight with Edwards on short notice to make himself the number one contender. What are your thoughts on both those? Uh, I, I, uh, well, firstly, obviously it's disappointing that we're not getting that fight, but it's, it's, it does soften the blow when they give you a new date and it's only a few weeks ago, a few weeks away. So um, it's, it's sad, but it's not that sad. It's not like Yoel against Johnson where we don't know if they'll ever fight because that fight, that fight's off and it hasn't been rescheduled. So a few weeks wait, I don't mind. Both guys will get more time to prepare. We might actually get a better fight. I I don't like this narrative coming out of Usman's camp of um, Colby needs to do more. Colby need, like uh, If you're prepared to fight Masvidal, who who, do, who didn't deserve any match, then you should be prepared to fight Col- Covington, who definitely does, in my opinion. I don't, it, it seems like they're trying to dodge him. And I think the, the, they're not, but the... It comes across that way, and I think they're just trying to wind them up more than anything. But if, from a fan's point of view, fans will be saying, "Why is he? Why is he ducking Kobe?" Because that's what it seems like. Yeah, the weirdest part was they were petitioning to get uh, uh, what you call uh, Michael Chiesa. They were try, trying to get Michael yeah. Chiesa to get a title shot, which doesn't really make sense. When was his last win? Neil Magny. Neil Magny's ranked eighth or eleventh or something. So it's like it wouldn't make sense for him to have a title shot when you got Colby Covington sitting there, uh Leon Edwards sitting there, Wonderboy sitting there. It just wouldn't make sense to give Michael uh Chester the shot right now. 
I don't think they're ducking him per se. I think that they just don't don't want to fight him just because of his personality, right? I think it's a personal thing more than anything. Um, but yeah, I, I just think you have to give him the fight. That's the fight to make, right? Yeah, and it, it makes all sense. I, I think Usman's getting a bit, a bit over, above station. He seems to think he's some type of massive pay-per-view star now, whereas he's not. UFC 261 sold 700 buys. It's, it, that weren't that impressive. We, I think a lot of people expected more than that. Um, he, they're talking about Jake Paul doing three to four million buys. It, it just, it's all, it all stinks. And he, he, it was very impressive what he did to Masvidal, but he was, a, a, he was expected to do not, not something like that, but he was expected to dominate him in that way. He was expected to run through him because it was a, a rematch no one wanted to see. So, um, I, I don't. I, th- I think Team Usman need to calm down a little bit. Don't get carried away and just deal with what's in front of you. And and Colby Covington is that man. And I think when it comes down to it, they'll be speaking all this nonsense. But when it comes down to it, if Dana White says you're fighting Colby Covington in you know a few months' time, they'll say yeah, and all the all this talk will stop. I do hope so. I really do hope that fight happens again because uh, it was so great the first time. So if we get that other news, Triller. Triller have offered uh, a month of, I can't remember the word to use, a month where people can pay for the pay-per-view to not be part of this lawsuit that they allegedly have with all these people who illegally stream event. Now, I've read two different stories. I don't know which one that Lowkick reported. Uh, I read the initial report, which to me read as though they were trying to get people who watched it illegally to buy it now. Um, but then I read another site who were saying that they were targeting the people that were actually streaming the content and getting them to buy it, which doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but there is a key difference because if you're a random person who watched this stream illegally on YouTube, I'm telling you now, your name is not on a lawsuit. There's no way they can have your details and pros- uh, prosecute you for watching something on YouTube, right? You didn't break any laws. So do you think this is a scare tactic to get people to buy the pay-per-view after the fact? It seems like that. So that's what they're saying. They're, they're not just suing the um, the people who stream the fight. They're suing every person who watched the fight illegally. So um, they're saying everyone who, who illegally streamed this fight could be hit with a £150,000 fine or, or lawsuit, whatever. Uh, that's not the case. They seem to, they're basically saying if you watched it even using a VPN, we can go to the VPN companies and they are legally bound have to hand over your IP address, your details, which I, I don't think is true. Yeah. I, I don't think it's true at all because if that was the case and that was possible, I think co- uh, companies bigger than Triller would have already intervened. Mm-hmm. If, if the Premier League in, in England can't stop, you know, Pirates, I don't I don't think Triller are the guys. If the UFC and Dana White can't stop them, I don't think Triller are, are the people. Forget Triller, forget the Premier League. What about Disney, Universal Studios? Their movies are downloaded illegally using VPNs every day. If you could just go to the VPN and they'd hand over your information, uh, one, there would be no business for these VPNs because there'd be no privacy. And two, all these big like movie companies would have done it. So I think this is a scare tactic. Hey, if you're watching this and you bought, watched the pay-per-view illegally, don't give in to this. Don't go and pay your 50 bucks. You, they can't do anything unless you were the one who actually streamed it and then maybe you should be worried. Uh, but as far as that's concerned, it seems a bit ridiculous to me. Yeah, it's, it's crazy and I think it is a scare tactic because I'm guessing the people who actually stream this content might have been uh, a rough age between 10 and 15. So maybe yeah. that might scare them to give them, you know, going into the mum's purse and, and paying for the fight with that. I think that's all it is. It's a scare tactic. It it, it just it's it's a bit laughable that they seem to be saying this when it, it everyone knows it, it's not the case. But maybe some people don't know and I'm sure there is a few idiots who have gone out and paid that fifty dollars. But let's be honest, if you paid fifty dollars in the first place, you're an idiot anyway because this fight was not worth it. The whole event was trash. It was um and they keep putting on these trash shows. So you know that people aren't going to pay for them because it is it it is what I've just said. It's trash. Very true. Uh, we'll jump on to some more MMA news. Uh, Sean O'Malley is allegedly booked to face Luis Smolka at UFC 264. What are your thoughts on this matchup? I do quite like it just because there seems to be, a, like Sean, from Sean's side, and anyway, what he's saying, he wants to be rushed to the top, but I don't like fighters being rushed to the top. I don't care how popular you are. You should go through the process of fighting certain levels of fighters. So I, I think um, Schmolke is a stop, step up from, um, who was it last time? Thomas Almeida. It's a yeah. step up, but one I expect him to pass again. And he should go through the levels instead of jumping straight into these fights with Cruz because it's not, 
if it's not going to end well, if Mar- if um, Marlon Vera takes you out in a round, what do you think Cruz is going to do? I don't care if Cruz is, you know, towards the end of his career. It's it's not going to be good for Sean O'Malley. So he needs to go through the test. He needs to pass them. And then we can gradually move him into these big fights rather than the rush. So I do quite like it. Look, I think it's 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 fine. It's good booking, I suppose. It'll be a fun fight. But I, I don't know. I, I do know why. I, it's just weird they keep giving him these veterans who have been in the sport for so long, right? I mean, he had uh, Eddie Wineland. Then who do you have last time? You just Thomas Almeida. And now he's having uh, Luis Smolka. These guys have been in the UFC for years, right? Why is he not getting people like Cody Stamen, uh, other people on that, like, Morab before Morab had that win last week, past weekend. It's like there's a bunch of upcoming guys who he's just not fighting, which is fine. Um, but these fights against these these veterans who've been around, they're they're just. I don't. I don't think they're the tests that he should be getting right now. But it, if he keeps winning, he's going to get these big tests against these guys like Morab and against uh, Stamen and whatnot. If he keeps winning, and I expect him to win in this one, I think he'll probably get it done, probably by finish and add it to his highlight reel. Yeah, I, I think it's it, these are geared to make him look good. That one three five division is stacked, and and outside the top fifteen, there's a bunch of guys who he could fight. Um, you know, Casey Kenny, Nathaniel Wood, uh, there's Jack Shaw who's just coming off a big win. There's there's plenty of fighters he could go in with, but there's a reason why he's not going in with them. Um, I think Schmulker has spent a lot of time at one two five as well, so I think it's all geared for him to look good and 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 you know. Go, go and get a highlight reel finish and, and call a bunch of people out and carry on the sugar show and get it back on track. I think the UFC maybe want to protect them and, and he's, he's a he's a big asset and, you know, putting him in there with one of these young contenders who don't necessarily have a name who could potentially beat him now it is dangerous for them and, and is dangerous for him. So I, I don't mind the fight though. I, I honestly don't mind him staying at this level, just, just creeping his way up because he's still young. He, he's still very... Um, He's still clearly not ready for the, the upper echelon guys, so I, I don't mind this fight, but I do expect them to, you know, look fantastic and and you know ease past Smolka. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the Sugar Show is a fun time, so I'm excited to see him either way. Um, that should be a good one. I don't have any more news. Do you have anything? I am not. No. Nope. Cool. Well, that'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll speak to you on the week uh, next week to recap all the events from this week and the weekend. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.